Good morning, boys and girls. I'm your substitute teacher. My name is Mr. Buttworth. The topic for today is... It's gene mutations. You, over there in the jean shirt. What you want to be when you grow up? I would like to be a police officer. All right. That's a pretty good profession. You over there in that black shirt. What you want to be when you grow up? I would like to be a fireman. All right. That's a pretty good profession, too. Hey, you in the back with those French braids. What's your name? My name is Snoop. All right, Snoop. What you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a molecular biologist. You better ask somebody. Big shout out to Mr. Butworth there for starting us off for this week's biology podcast. I'm wondering if you ever realized that Snoop Dogg had such biological ambitions. Well, now you've heard it from the man himself. So in today's podcast, we are going to be learning about gene mutations, the different types of mutations and their effects. So without further ado, let's get stuck into some biology. All right, so we're going to start off by actually looking at what a gene mutation actually is. So we're going to come up with a bit of a definition for that. For a starters, just pause me and try and think of the definition as yourself. You've looked at mutations in level two, um, and you should have some sort of ideas just from general knowledge anyway. So have a think about it yourself. Okay, so a mutation, or genetic mutation, is any change in a DNA sequence that's permanent. And there are a lot of ways that can happen. So, for example, uh, we've all learned about the A, T, C, and G code. Well, maybe that code becomes changed through some reason or another, and maybe a T gets changed for an A. And if that happens and it's permanent, then that's an example of a genetic mutation. So now let's have a quick look about what causes mutations. There are some really good notes on this, guys, in page 74 of your Continuing Biology book. So if you want to do a bit further reading, that's where to go. However, we'll cover them really, really quickly right here, right now. So first of all, mutations could just be spontaneous. It could just happen through random events in the cell. But there are other reasons that you might have mutations occurring as well, such as ionizing, ionizing radiation, um, ultraviolet light, x-rays, um, chemicals you're exposed to, such as maybe even cigarette smoke, things like that, and some viruses can actually cause mutations in genes. Some mutations happen in body cells, and when mutations happen in these normal cells, those cells can die, or they can cause cancer. If these mutations happen in sex cells, or gametes, then the mutation can be passed on to the next generation, so the organism is really severely affected right from birth. But that's dependent on the actual genetic disorder or mutation that's been passed on. So we've had a bit of a look at what a mutation is, and also what causes mutations, and also the different types of cells that can be affected by by mutations. Now let's get into some more detailed work on gene mutations themselves. Now when we're talking about gene mutations, we're talking about changes in the genetic code of one particular gene at one particular time. So obviously we've looked at a gene being a section of DNA that codes for a protein, What we're looking at today is a mutation to a particular section of DNA that codes for a particular protein. Another name for these type of mutations is also point mutations. And that's because the mutation happens at a particular point in the DNA. So on your screens right now, you should see a list of the four different types of gene mutation or point mutation. So we've got substitutions, inversions, deletions and insertions. So let's go through each one at a time and talk about what each one does and maybe give examples when we can. So let's start with substitutions. So very simply, a substitution is when one base of a section of DNA is actually substituted with a different base. So for example, uh, A is substituted for a T. And this can obviously affect the particular codon at the point where it happens. And if the codon changes, you can end up with a less desirable amino acid. Now, if you look at the diagram on your screens right now, we can look at an actual example of a substitution. So if we look at the left-hand side of the diagram, at the top we've got the DNA, the normal DNA, with the code CTT, and then the transcript underneath it that's made with that, which would be GAA, would be its codon, which is translated into GLU, which is the amino acid. However, if a substitution occurs in that piece of DNA and you end up with a mutant piece of DNA, as is shown on the, le- on the right-hand side of the diagram, instead of it being CTT, all of a sudden we've got CAT, and that produces a different codon on the mRNA, which is then translated into VAL instead of GLU at the amino acid level. So that's a substitution. 
And an example of a disorder that's caused by a substitution would be sickle cell disease. So we've talked about that in class already, and that's when you get the um, blood cells. If you look on your screens right now, you can see the sickle cells there, the person that's suffering from sickle cell disease will actually have some blood cells, some red blood cells, that are actually like a half moon shape. Now substitutions are probably the least severe of the mutations because they only actually affect one codon. Some of the other mutations that we're going to look at now will actually affect more than one codon. However, there are examples when substitutions can be really bad. Here's a quick question for you. Let's say a substitution occurred in some DNA which caused the codon, which is the mRNA that matches up to it, to change from UGG to UGA. What would happen then? Pause me and have a think about it. Look in your books. Okay, well if you figured that out, or if you didn't, here's the answer. If we went from UGG to UGA, we'd go from making the amino acid TRP to making a, um, the, the stop codon. And obviously what would happen then is the RNA polymerase would move along, get to the stop codon and stop transcribing the gene right in the middle of the gene. So this can be a really serious effect too. Of course the opposite could also happen where you could have UGA changing to UGG as a result of a substitution which could basically instead of uh, transcription stopping when it should it could just completely just keep, keep transcribing and then you could end up with a really 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 long polypeptide that again is no use either. Okay, so the next point mutation or gene mutation we want to look at is inversions. And an inversion, again, is a reasonably sort of simple mutation, um, just like a substitution, except instead of it just actually being swapped with, say, for example, a T with a random other nucleotide base, say A, uh, G, or C, this was actually involving two adjacent bases actually swapping with one another, as is shown on the screen right now. So I'm going to move quite quickly with this one, but as you can see in the picture, basically what we've got on the top line of the DNA there, we've got a G inverting with the T, so it's just basically swapping over, and then obviously that swaps over with the mRNA there, so you've ended up with a different amino acid being formed, instead of it being GLN, you've got uh, THR, which obviously is going to affect the primary structure of the protein that's being made. So the third and fourth in the list there of point mutations, deletions and insertions are quite similar to one another in the respect to their effects. And these are really, really serious mutations usually. In fact, most of the time, mutations that are insertions or deletions are usually lethal. Now, very simply, an insertion or a deletion is basically when, um, well, an insertion is when a new, a new base is actually added into the stranded DNA, and a deletion is when one's taken out. Now, that might not sound too serious, but let's just have a look at how that actually affects the DNA strand as a whole. And to really understand this, we need to understand something called, a term called frame shift. So looking at the screens now, so we've got a few codons on there, and we've basically got two rows, and that's two different sections of DNA. The top row is there is the um, normal DNA, and below that, the bottom section there is the mutant version. Now let's just cast our minds back a little bit to translation. And let's imagine this mRNA transcript, as you can see on the top there, starting with AUG, moving through the ribosome. The ribosome starts translating that um, mRNA transcript at AUG and then just continues to transcript, uh, sorry, translate that transcript in groups of three. So it starts off translating AUG, the start one, then moves on to GUU, AUU, and so on. Now if we look at the bottom set of lines there, where we've got the same transcript, you'll notice that one of the bases in that transcript, the U there, is highlighted in red. And this is where we've had what we call an insertion, which is a type of point mutation. And this insertion has resulted in what we call frame shift. Have a look at it and see if you can figure out what that means. Okay, so what we've got, we've got to remember the ribosome is moving along these in three, and it doesn't know if there's been a mutation or anything, so it just keeps moving along in those frames of three at a time. So when it gets to the insertion there, where the U's been put in, it just assumes that UCC is the codon. Whereas before there was a mutation there, it was CCA. Now as a result of that new base, U, being inserted into the DNA strand, all those codons are then moved along to the next three, and that's what we call a frame shift. So if you notice, we've underlined the amino acid codes underneath it, and that's where all those amino acids are now different from the original strand of DNA. And on this next picture, we can see the same thing, where what we've had this time is we've removed a base, so we've removed C, and all those bases have then shifted to the left, so the codons have all changed, and then all the consequent amino acids have changed as well. So there's the four types of gene mutations, or point mutations, substitutions, inversions, deletions, and insertions. I hope that was helpful. Make sure you use the wiki.
In the meantime, keep it real and awesome.